Hello Internet, my name is Hazel from Hazel Nutty Games and a new year is upon us. We're actually two weeks into it, but we're not going to worry about that because it's time for Hazel's top five games of 2013. If your favorite game is tragically missing from this countdown, remember, I am only including games available on PC, so all my beloved 3DS games are not eligible, that's a different story. And of course, games that I've actually played, so keep that in mind. And finally, this is going to be my personal opinion. Let's get right into it. Number 5. Bioshock Infinite. To give you a bit of background, this was the first and to date the only first person shooter that I have ever played of my own volition. The fact that this game made such an impression on me despite being a genre that's very much outside of my preferences was huge, and it says a lot about the quality of this game. The atmosphere and the story of this made it riveting, and I personally found the combat to be dynamic and fun, and violent. I unfortunately had to stop playing Bioshock Infinite before finishing it due to crippling motion sickness, which is largely why I don't have experience with first person shooting, but I'm anxiously waiting for the medical community to come up with a solution that will let me finally finish this awesome game. Number 4, The Wolf Among Us. This would be higher on my list if there was more content available for it. Of course, we've only seen the first episode, so I'm going to stick it here for now. However, my impression from the first episode has been amazing. The story pulled me in right away, the QTE action scenes are adrenaline filled, they're really fun, and it made me care about the characters in a way that not a lot of games do. I'll save my final judgment until we have access to the full game, but it's looking really good so far and I can't wait. If you're interested in a point and click kind of story game in the style of The Walking Dead, based on a gritty fantasy universe of the comic book fables, you need to play this. Number 3. Hearthstone. I was so jazzed for Hearthstone from the very first announcement, and the wait to get into the beta was excruciating. It feels like Blizzard made this game just for me, a collectible card game in the style of Magic the Gathering but without all of the learning curve that makes Magic really frustrating for me. Hearthstone is free, it's super easy to pick up, and you can learn as you play. The way the mouse over tooltips explain all the mechanics is awesome because you don't have to spend a bunch of time reading things, looking things up, googling rules, you can just go with it. It's simple to start, but it's not easy to win, and the skill ceiling is deceptively high. The games are quick, they're really fun, and the microtransactions are reasonably optional. It has all the charming flavor of World of Warcraft, but in an easily accessible casual game. This is going to ruin my life when it comes out for tablets and mobile phones. Can't wait. Number 2. Lily Looking Through This is a teeny tiny little game with a big giant heart. I'm someone who adores point and click adventures and this one just nailed it for me. It's not perfect, um, in particular the character animation is a little bit out of place and a couple of the puzzles were a tad too stumping, but my whole experience with this game was just absolutely magical. This game's a perfect escape from the grit, stress, and darkness of real life. It's a beautiful little world with a simple, cute little girl just trying to find her brother. Despite having almost no dialogue, the story has some real depth to it and it stuck with me for some time. This is a perfect one to play alone, just without internet, no multitasking, no distractions. It's short and for me, it's perfect. Despite having pretty limited replayability, this is one that I know I'm just going to keep coming back to. I love it. And, drumroll, in the number one spot for Hazel's 2013 Game of the Year is... Don't Starve. This game is a good like 70% of why I started this channel. I have spent more time with this $15 little indie game than with any other PC game except for WoW. It's charming, it's challenging, and the content patches for it just keep coming. It's got oodles of replayability with all the different characters to try and you'll never have quite the same experience twice. It's basically Minecraft for someone like me who's too snobby and antisocial to actually play Minecraft. The adventure mode is so challenging that to this day I have yet to beat the damn thing, but as long as I have a computer that will run it, I'm going to keep going back to try again. This is fantastic and just talking about it for 30 seconds has made me want to play it again, so I'm going to go do that. So that's it! Thanks so much for watching everybody! Let me know what your favorite games of the year were in the comments below. Have yourselves a wonderful, wonderful day! Bye!